This is part B now of our introductory video to a mesh current analysis. In the uh, part A in the previous video, we had considered this circuit where we have a 2 ohm resistor, a 1 ohm resistor, and a 2 ohm and a 1 ohm resistor that are hooked up to these two batteries, a 6 volt battery and a 7 volt battery. And in the previous video, we set up the mesh current um, equations for these three separate currents involving these three separate loops. And the equations that we determine that we had derived actually were these. We have three separate equations now and we have three unknowns to solve for. Current 1, current 2, and current 3. So we have three unknowns and we have three separate independent equations we should be able to solve for I1, I2, and I3. The first step is for these coefficients of I1, we make a column with them like this. And likewise, we do the same for I2 and the same thing for I3. So here what we have is really a 3 by 3 determinant. Step 1 is to determine numerically the value of this determinant. Once we do that, then we're in a position to solve for I1, I2, and I3. So let's take care of step one first and determine what the numerical value is for this determinant, this 3 by 3 determinant. Incidentally, for all the videos, we're not going to be involved with anything more complicated than 3 by 3 determinants. So here we have it right here. And the way to determine the numerical value is to, is to expand it out using minors. And that, to do that, we have, we take this, we're going to consider this number, this number, and this number. So we have three. And that is going to be times this subdeterminant. That what we do is we cover up the column that the number three is in and cover up the row that it's in. And we have this two by two subdeterminant, 6 minus 3 and minus 3, 6. Okay, then the next step is it is minus whatever number this is. And this is negative 1, so that will make it, in this case, a plus value. And again, we have another subdeterminant, and we form that by covering up the column that negative 1 is in and the row that it appears in. And that leaves us with this subdeterminant, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 6. And then it is plus this coefficient, but this has a minus sign by it, so we have minus 2 times this subdeterminant. Cover up the column that minus 2 appears in. Cover up the row that it's in. And there we have the subdeterminant, negative 1, negative 2, 6, negative 3. Okay, now let's see what these subdeterminants come out to be equal to. Here we have 36 minus positive 9, that would be 27. Here we have negative 6 minus plus 6, negative 6 minus plus 6, that would be negative 12. 
So this subdeterminant has a numerical value of minus 12. And for this subdeterminant, try to keep things in focus as we go along here. Here we have 3 minus negative 12. 3 minus negative 12. That would be, would be 3 plus 12, or this would be plus 15. So let's see, we have 3 times 27 minus 12 from here minus 2 times 15. So this would be 81 minus 12 minus 30. And this I think comes out to be equal to 39. 81 minus 42 is 39. So the value of this determinant right here is 39. Now we're going to use this information in just a minute. What we're going to do in our next step, though, is construct the determinant that we need to determine the value of I1. And to do that, so now we want to determine what is I1. So we make a different determinant, and what we do is this column vector right here, or this, this column of um, coefficients, we replace with these numbers right here, and then the rest of the determinant remains unchanged. So let's just make some room here and do that. We want to determine now the value for I1. So this column of numbers is now replaced with this column of numbers. 1, 0, 6. And then the rest of the numbers stay the same. Negative 1, 6, minus 3, negative 2, minus 3, 6. Like this and like this. So now we have this determinant, and it is divided by 39. And what we're going to do, once we determine the numerical value of this, is very similar procedure for determining I2. We're going to form another matrix. And in the second matrix that we make, this column is replaced by these numbers. And this column, and this column stays the same. And it will be divided by... 39. Then to determine the value of I3, we're going to construct a third determinant where this column gets replaced by the numbers 106 and it is divided by the um, number 39, the value of this determinant. So let's first of all see if we can determine what I1 is. So Again, to, to evaluate this determinant, we expand it out with minors. Same old story. So here we have 1. And we want to get the subdeterminant, cover up the column, cover up the row. And we have, hopefully you can see that all right, 6 minus 3 and minus 3. 6. Notice how symmetrical these are. Then it is 
minus this number, which has a minus sign by it, so it's actually plus 1. times this sub this subdeterminant cover up the row cover up the column and we have 0 6 negative 3 6 and then it is minus this number which already has a minus sign by it so this is actually plus 2 No, that's wrong. It is minus 2. This is the only one where we change a sign for. It's always this coefficient. Then for the second expansion, it's negative this number. That has a negative sign, so that's positive, and now it's minus 2. When you're going through, it gets a little bit tedious, and it's very easy to slip up and make a mistake that can throw you off. So this is why we're trying to take our time and do this carefully so we don't make any foolish mistakes. OK, cover up this column, cover up this row, and the subdeterminant is 0, 06, 6 minus 3. here and here. All right, let's see if we can find out what this is. Here we have that I1 is equal to now here we have 6 times 6 is 36 minus 9 that is 27. Try to bring keep this in better focus. 36 minus 9 is 27 And here we have 0 minus negative 18. So that gives this a value of plus 18. And here we have 0 minus 36. So this has a value, the subdeterminant has a value of minus 36. So here we have this is 27 plus 18 minus 2 times minus 36. So this is going to give us plus 72 from here. So we have 72 plus 18 plus 27 divided by 39. And that is what current I1 is equal to. This is 90 plus 27. That is 117 divided by 39. That equals plus 3 amps. So there is current I1. And notice it has a plus sign. If it had a negative sign by it, that would mean that that um, clockwise, the direction of that clockwise current that we um, assigned to it when we were setting up the problem is wrong and be going in the opposite direction, actually. So when we're setting the problem up, remember that we assume that our currents in each one of these different windows of the circuit was going clockwise, if that was the wrong direction, then we would have gotten a negative sign here. OK, let's see if we can proceed along and quickly determine what the second current is equal to. So now we're going to be replacing this column with this column. So it comes out then that I2 
these numbers stay, stay the same, so we have 3, negative 1, negative 2. Put these numbers in place of this column, 1, 0, 6, and these stay the same. Negative 2, negative 3, plus 6. So there's our new determinant, and this is divided by 39. So let's see if we can quickly determine what I2 is. Expand this out, divided by 39. Here we have 3, and the sub determinant cover here, cover the column, cover the row. We have negative 0, 06 and minus 3. 6. And let's see, this would be 6 times 0 is 0 minus negative 18, or that would have a numerical value of plus 18. So we could just, right here, this is 3 times 18. Then it is minus this coefficient, so we have minus 1 times the value of this subdeterminant. Cover up the row, cover up the column. We have negative 1, negative 2, and for here negative 3 and 6. Minus 2 times this subdeterminant. Cover up the row that this appears in, cover up the column, and we have negative 1, negative 2, 0, 6. Okay, so let's see, what is this equal to? Here we have negative 6, minus plus 6, negative 6, minus 6, that should be equal to negative 12. That'd be negative 6 plus negative 6. So this is negative 12, and then here we have negative 6 minus 0, so this has a value of didn't write that very clearly. Let's get into better focus. This is minus 6. So 3 times 18, that's 54, minus 1 times minus 12 is plus 12. Then we have negative 2 times negative 6 that is plus 12, divided by 39, so this is 24 plus 54, that is 78, divided by 39, so this comes out to be plus 2 amps. So that's the second current. And it looks like we're not going to have time in this video to determine I3, but come back, join us for the next video, we'll quickly find out what I3 is, and then we'll go back and apply those values to this circuit here, and we'll finish off the rest of the problem. So come back, join us for the third part of the video, and we'll finish off this business.